What do you get when you mix a pioneering neuroscientist, a touch of psychic wonder, and a pod of intelligent aquatic animals? You get John C. Lilly, often referred to as a mad scientist. The man who dared to break boundaries and discover answers to questions that no other human had even contemplated. The man with a mind like an AI, created using only clips of the Joe Rogan podcast. Have you ever wondered what happens if you give a dolphin mind-altering psych- Jamie pulled that one up. In the privacy of mind, what one believes to be true, either is true or becomes true within certain limits. These limits turn out to be further beliefs to be transcended. In the province of the mind, there are no limits. John Cullingham Lilly, born 1915 in Minnesota, began his academic journey at the California Institute of Technology, or Caltech for short. His first calling was biology. He graduated in 1938 with a bachelor's degree, but wasn't finished there. Inspired by a book called Brave New World, becoming somewhat obsessed with the concept of physical chemical processes in the brain and how they impact the subjective experiences of the mind. With this, he decided to apply to the School of Medicine at Dartmouth College and enrolled later that same year. Even as a young man, he was attracted to fringe science and experiments. Within one year of being at Dartmouth, he participated in a study with a former Caltech biochemistry professor which likely changed his entire life without ever knowing it. Lilly was placed on a completely protein-free diet, then given measured amounts of glycine and arginine. Borsuk, the person running the experiment, theorized that they were involved in the production of glycosamine. This subjected Lilly to a great deal of mental and physical strain. As the weeks passed by, he grew weaker and weaker, delirious, and even described as insane. The experiment's findings supported Borsuk's theory, and Lilly was named amongst its authors, making it his first professionally published scientific paper. It was also the first example of a lifelong trend performing risky medical experiments on his own body. It was during this experiment and the delirious periods that John started to develop an obsession with the human body, and more specifically the human mind. After the experiment concluded, he made the decision to change academic course to that of medical research. For this, he needed to change schools again, which led him to the University of Pennsylvania. It's there that John met a professor by the name of Bazit Haldane, who introduced John to the philosophy of self-experimentation. He claimed it was unethical to conduct experiments on anyone or anything that you would not first conduct on yourself. The pair grew close during their tenure at the university, so much so that Bazit recognizing John's potential set him up with his very own research laboratory. It was in this lab that John C. Lilly created his first contribution to medical science, the electrical capacitance diaphragmanometer a device to measure blood pressure. Following the next 12 years or so of his life, John went on to bigger and better things, dipping his toes into just about every pool, even remotely associated to his field of expertise. He was inventing things that contributed to the war effort, such as instruments to measure gas pressure in high altitude flying, and writing books based on his many, many experiments and creations. Regardless of this work though, John never lost a passion for what started him on this journey to begin with, the human mind. But how could he focus inward, like no one else before him had been able to achieve? In 1954, there was a period where there was a question as to whether the brain could stay awake of itself, or whether it needed stimulation from the outside external reality. It was this thought that led him to his first breakthrough, the isolation tank, also known as the sensory deprivation tank. Deprive yourself of all sight, sound, smell, and even your physical weight, giving you nothing to do except to be alone with your undisturbed thoughts. John was likely the first human in history to be completely alone with his mind in this way, without any external stimulation. Though, he didn't feel like this was perfect yet, as John was still confined to normal thought. This was when John decided to introduce another element that would elevate the human consciousness and allow him to experience a true out-of-body journey an injection of US government-sponsored LSD. As the medical started to work, John C. Lilly, a scientist, inventor, and a resident of planet Earth, began to transform. He evolved into something bigger, stronger, wiser, and as expansive as the cosmos. And I immediately found that this was a doorway. This was not an isolation tank. 
That's a cover story. It is really a doorway into the universe. It allows one to escape one's body. One's soul can leave, and one can clean one's karma from one's soul and become pure spirit and communicate with God. It was at this moment he thought of the most genius idea. What if I were to put a dolphin in this tank and inject it with the same dose of LSD? Will their consciousness open up just like mine? Will I then be able to communicate with dolphins like I've always wanted? The story could have ended here, but of course, John, being a man of vision, started to follow up with these ideas. Over the next few years, he spent an increasing amount of time inside the cocoon of his invention, experimenting with various doses of certain substances and documenting his experiences. Before long, and in the mid-1950s, John began what he called dolphin cognition and communication research. This began in Coconut Grove, Florida, though John quickly became obsessed with this endeavour as his life's work and purchased a property to use for continued research. This property was a seaside lab, which he converted to be a dolphin-human cohabitation house. Which is exactly what it sounds like. They flooded half the house, allowing them to live with the dolphins. They ate together, played together, had language lessons together, and of course slept together. John believed that he often heard the dolphins repeating English words back to him, and also that intelligent animals would want to mimic the language of its captors so they could communicate. Which sounds crazy, but it was reported by multiple people, and even recorded. English people pronoun say Margaret, Margaret, no, this Margaret. The dolphins were making conscious efforts to imitate their instructor's speech. They were able to also perform tasks and activities based on English commands, such as bring the ball to the doll versus bring the doll to the ball. The entire operation was so fascinating that John and the project received funding from NASA to continue their work, though NASA probably didn't quite know the extent of what was happening within this house. See, like other animals, dolphins have certain urges, sexual urges. Some workers at the research facility discovered this fact, and when faced with the logistical nightmare of accommodating those urges, such as moving one dolphin from the upstairs room to the downstairs where the females were, they did things that would probably be considered a no-no. One young male dolphin lived full-time in the same room as a female researcher, and started to rub himself on her legs or hands. When she noticed why he was doing this and for what purpose, she decided to, quote, relieve his urges herself manually. She described many years later in an interview how she wasn't uncomfortable with it, so long as Peter the dolphin wasn't rough, and that it was not a private event. The other researchers in the house observed this activity. He would rub himself on my knee or my foot or my hand or whatever, and I, and I allowed that. I didn't, I wasn't uncomfortable with that as long as it wasn't too rough. That was, of course, until Hustler magazine caught wind of the story and published a scandalous article about the woman dolphins in a NASA-funded experimental research facility. Add in that John, now a famous name in the scientific world, was experimenting even more heavily with psychedelic and things were destined to come crashing down. It was just a matter of time. He was even among a very small group of neuroscientists who were licensed by the US government to research LSD, giving him unlimited access. Part of his experiments were to see whether or not it could be used to treat mental health patients. Although it's difficult to know whether or not the government knew John had been injecting dolphins with these since 1964 to try and communicate with them, which didn't work as expected. It was a frustrating experience for him. The last 10 years had been building up to this exact experiment, and it was mostly a failure. There were of course observable changes in dolphins' communication, but it wasn't as fantastical as he expected. The dolphins normally vocalise a low percentage of time when in the proximity of humans or other dolphins, but when dosed up, would communicate for massive chunks of time in three hour windows. Meaning that a dosed up dolphin wouldn't stop talking when it thought someone nearby was intelligent enough to understand them. Of course, he still couldn't understand the dolphins, which was the problem. One very interesting piece of research though was John observing a particularly shy dolphin who was the victim of a spear attack piercing his tail would become much more comfortable around him after being dosed. Instead of swimming away and keeping his distance, 40 minutes after administering the dolphin would come close, vocalise and swim alongside him for hours at a time. 
Despite these developments, and some of them being what he considered miraculous, John was still disappointed he was no closer to having conversations with his subjects. Teaching the dolphins English had mostly been a bust, and despite multiple different attempts, he couldn't figure out how else to interpret language between the two species. John then started to focus more on his psychic adventures, including now using ketamine. That evening I took 150 milligrams of ketamine, and suddenly the Earth Quincy's control office removed my pe and handed it to me. And I screamed in terror. My wife Tony came running in from the bedroom, and she said it's still attached. Pretty soon after, the funding was cut and the research facility was decommissioned. The dolphins were moved to smaller tanks and away from their handlers who had lived with them each for six months straight, and within weeks, the dolphins started to commit suicide. John continued his studies in a more confined environment, employing more and more out-of-the-box methods, such as telepathy, and throughout the 70s and 80s, John's work became more and more fringe. He went from being considered a brilliant scientist on the frontier of human understanding, pushing the boundaries of what we know as a species, to being considered mad. John had always published what was considered quirky theories and was incredibly interested in the unknown, such as when he founded the Order of the Dolphin, a group of scientists who were trying to use radio astronomy to detect evidence of intelligent life outside of our solar system. But by the late 70s, John was writing about the SSI, or Solid State Intelligence, a network of computation-capable solid-state systems engineered by humans who will eventually develop into autonomous bioforms. During a ket fueled vision, John prophesied a dramatic conflict between the human race and the SSI bioforms due to their drastic different requirements of survival conditions on the planet Earth, which is essentially the plot of a sci-fi movie. He later concluded that, due to his long-term exposure and uses of various psychedelics, there exists a hierarchical group of cosmic entities. The lowest of these cosmic entities he dubbed the Earth Coincidence Control Office, or ECHO for short. ECCO, in Italian means this is it, but it means to me the Earth Coincidence Control Office, which is a, one of God's field offices. ECHO runs our lives, though they won't, they won't admit it. Overall, John C. Lilly was a brilliant mind and a pioneer. His life was a unique blend of scientific curiosity, boundary-pushing experimentation, and unyielding determination to explore the limits of human consciousness, as well as interspecies communication. He likely found that limit in his own mind, and then pushed a little bit further than he should have, leaving him with a somewhat tarnished legacy. That being said, his work survives him even to this day, and it has inspired researchers and thinkers across the globe, though hopefully they don't follow in the footsteps of becoming what many would consider a real-life mad scientist. I talk about insanity, which is what's going on in your mind, and outsanity, which is where you communicate with those outsiders. As you know, if you give too much of your insanity, they'll lock you up. Well, I tried to as much as I could. They didn't lock me up. They published it and paid me. 